Hello, 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 Gemini. I'm Poetic Heretic, and this is your September 2020 astrology forecast, where we take a look at the most significant astrological developments of the month and interpret them for your sign. Now, we are doing something a little bit different this month, and that is, rather than my having a written report here, we are instead interpreting each chart, each aspect in real time. That is what I am doing for you. I want to also remind you that videos like this will always be most accurate for your rising sign. So I highly recommend using these primarily for your rising sign. And then if you would like to, after that, you can also use them for your sun and or moon sign as well. So without further ado, Gemini, let us begin. So the first chart we need to look at is one that takes place or is cast for the very end of the month and it is when Mars perfectly squares Saturn and the reason for this is because this energy is going to be with us for the entire month of September. You may recall if you saw my forecast last month uh, I talked about Mars and its extended stay in Aries. Well now we're in a very interesting chapter in that development where Mars slowing down to station retrograde, and indeed it does that um, this month in, here in September, uh, is now basically holding that position around 25 degrees of Aries, and it's doing so in a square with Saturn. So as a result of it having to slow down to station retrograde, it's holding that position, and as it holds that position, it's basically in a square with Saturn the entire time. And so we have that all month. And so everything else I go over in this forecast, you need to understand it within the context of this, of this Mars-Saturn square that we have here. So September 29th around 5 p.m. Eastern time is just when it perfects. But basically it's in effect all month, the entire month of September. Now, what does this mean for you? What does the Mars-Saturn square mean? It is, more than anything else, frustration. It is Mars wanting to push forward, especially Mars and Aries, wanting to act now, be spontaneous, push forward, take action, uh, go for that which is new. And then it's Saturn and Capricorn saying, nope, you must slow down, you must stop, you must uh, take your time, you must do it this way, you must go through this process first. And so it's this very frustrating um energy, this very frustrating tension, and we have that all month. Now, for you specifically, Gemini, uh, this is taking place in your 11th house of friends and uh, social networks, as well as your, give me a second to calculate, 8th house of business, other people's money, your partner's money, uh, and issues of life and death. So before we like fully delineate this, again, I just want to remind you that this Mars-Saturn square is uh, with us all this month, and it doesn't just end once the month of September is over. And so the outcome of this, we're not going to see immediately. We're going to see it uh, much further down the road. However, with that said, uh, what it's manifesting as um, more specifically for your sign of Gemini, is a stressful situation in the area of your friends or social group and or uh, business, your partner's money, uh, or issues of life and death, and involving focused action, motivation, desire, or will, as well as authority, limitation, uh, reality, obstacles, is pushing you into new areas of activity. Now, again, you likely won't see these new areas of activity uh, just yet because of how long this is lasting, but uh, when they eventually come, those new areas of activity and the areas of life most likely uh, to be affected for you by this transit are indeed your uh, friends or social group, your... Give me a second to calculate this. Your work health schedule or day-to-day -day activities. I'm doing this all in my head if you can't tell. So if I like pause for a moment, that's why. 
Um, so your work, health, schedule, day-to-day activities, your business, your partner's money, your issues of life and death, and or your beliefs, spirituality, ideals, or that which is foreign to you. So some very dynamic and interesting possibilities uh, with this Mars-Saturn square. Another thing that's worth mentioning with that is uh, this is not a time to try to push forward into anything new if you can help it. This is not a time to try to um, force action. It's Instead, it's much better if you can uh, try to work with the energy more by being disciplined and being patient, as frustrating as that might be. It will be better for you in the long run if you... Uh, don't try to force your way through this resistance, but instead um, exercise some patience, some caution, and these sorts of things. And it's also not a good time for uh, fighting any kind of a battle, essentially. So like save your heroic energy, save your um, battles for a later time if you can, especially if you can wait ideally five or six months from now when we are uh, out of this very intense uh, Mars square Saturn aspect. So, all right, with all of that said, and keeping all of that in mind as the sort of background energy of this entire month of September, let us look at our first major event this month, and that is, of course, the full moon in Pisces on September 2nd at 1.22 a.m. Eastern Time. And a reminder that all times in this video are in Eastern time, so adjust your time zone accordingly. Now, the full moon in Pisces, first of all, this is a full moon that really gives us a break for a few days or so from the otherwise very earthy and practical Virgo energy that we have this time of year as the sun moves through Virgo, and instead it illuminates and activates the energy of Pisces, very dreamy, mystical, spiritual, creative, um, emotional, much more right-brained and intuitive. So that's what we have on one level. Uh, notice also that, of course, with it taking place um, in Pisces, it is co-present with Neptune, the modern ruler of Pisces, adding even more dreaminess and illusion and fantasy and creativity and spirituality to the mix. Uh, even the supernatural can be sort of activated uh, at this time, whether in a, I guess, literal sense or whether you're just, I don't know, studying it or what, what have you. In addition to that, the full moon is in a very tight sextile with Uranus and Taurus. And so that is adding an element of excitement to the full moon. Excitement, innovation, um, a sort of exciting tension in the air, perhaps uh, this electric energy of maybe not quite knowing what to expect, you know, as, uh, as we have with Uranus, this planet being about breakthroughs and pushing forward into the new and innovating and being unique and sudden and shocking and unexpected. So we certainly have an infusion of that into the full moon, though it is not the full story of the full moon, or it's not the main focus of the full moon. That would be the dreaminess of Pisces. Now, for you, Gemini, this full moon is taking place in your 10th house of career and public image, and so you can expect things to come to a head in the area of your career or public image. And so that is what we have there. Now, later that same day at 8.19 a.m. Eastern Time, we also have Venus opposite Saturn. So this creates an interesting contrast between the dreamy, mystical nature of the Pisces full moon and the much more somber, serious nature of this Venus-Saturn opposition, uh, because that is what we have here. Um, Venus opposite Saturn, for you specifically, Gemini, is basically a situation where someone or something is challenging you in the area of your money or self-image and or 
business, your partner's money, your issues of life and death that is involving how you relate to others or things that you like or love, uh, as well as reality, limitation, obstacles, or responsibility, perhaps. It may require you to make a choice, and the choice may not be easy, especially with um, both Venus and Saturn configured in hard aspect to Mars throughout this, and we'll talk about that talk about that more in a moment. Uh, and this situation will end up most likely affecting your, let's see here, how you spend time alone or your enemies, your creative self-expression. Uh, let's see, give me a second to calculate. Yet again, your partner's money, business, or issues of life and death, and or your beliefs, spirituality, ideals, or that which is foreign to you. So a number of uh, potential areas of activation that we have there. Now, the square to Mars, what does that say? This is, of course, making it more probable that there could be some anger in the mix, that there could be some frustration in the mix, especially since, again, this is basically activating the Mars-Saturn square that we just went over. Um, conflict of wills at times, I would see, or I would say with that. So it's interesting because Mars is square to Saturn all month, and it's been square to Saturn for a significant portion of August as well. And Venus just kind of swoops in here and activates that square by squaring Mars itself and opposing Saturn. And so we may see even an interesting manifestation of that Mars-Saturn square on this day. Uh, it's also interesting to note that this Venus-Saturn opposition is really the tail end of a series of oppositions that Venus made, um, first to Jupiter, then to Pluto, and now to Saturn, and the oppositions to Jupiter and Pluto were at the end of August, and so this might in fact be the continuation of an event uh, that began around the end of August or really got going around that time. And so that is what we have there. Next, on September 11th at 4.20 p.m. Eastern Time, we have the Sun opposite Neptune. So first of all, this is another contrast between the Sun and earthy practical Virgo and Neptune in dreamy, mystical, intuitive Pisces. And the Sun is our ego or sense of self. It is our vitality, it is our physical energy very often, and Neptune is the planet of dreams and imagination and spirituality and all that is non-physical. And so we have that, that dynamic playing out to begin with. Now with the opposition for you specifically, Gemini, yet again we have something, we have someone or something challenging you in the area of your home and family and or your career public image. So you could also say someone or something challenging you in your public or private life that is involving your sense of self or even your energy or vitality, uh, as well as dreams, spirituality, fantasy, uh, that sort of thing, and may require you to make a choice and will most likely end up affecting uh, your communication, short distance travel, or that which is familiar to you, and or your career public image. So very interesting stuff there. However, that's not the end of this story because you also may notice that as the sun is opposite Neptune, it is in uh, powerful trines to Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn in Capricorn and your eighth house of business, your partner's money, and issues of life and death. Now, trines are breakthroughs. And so in addition to what we just went over with the sun opposite Neptune, we also have uh, probabilities 
for breakthroughs involving expansion of one's worldview with Jupiter, uh, deep emotional experiences and inner transformation with Pluto, as well as uh, breakthroughs involving reality, limitation, obstacles, or authority figures with Saturn. Um, I think a lot of times the Sun trine, Saturn in particular, can almost be like the approval of authority figures, but that's not always what we see, That, but that is one fairly common manifestation that that seems to occur. However, uh, what I would really point out here is that with these powerful trines, well, trines facilitate speed for better or for worse. And so whatever happens around this time uh, is likely to be very sudden and uh, quite the breakthrough. Now, of course, these trines are sort of ongoing, so it's not like right on uh, September 11th, uh, when the sun opposes Neptune, these other things are going to manifest as well, but just roughly around the middle of the month, I would say, uh, these trine aspects are more likely to manifest. And let's see, there was one more thing I was going to say about that. What was it? Let's see, the sun trines, Jupiter, Pluto, and then Saturn. Oh, yes, just that uh, that conglomeration of planets, Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn is in, again, your eighth house of business, your partner's money, your issues of life and death. And so expect some activity uh, very probable in that area as well. All right, so next we have the new moon in Virgo on September 17th at 7 a.m. Eastern Time. This is a very practical and very earthy new moon occurring in the earthy sign of Virgo. Uh, it may be very analytical and logical as well as is the energy of Virgo. Even more so, it is made practical and reality-based by its powerful trine with, yet again, Saturn, the planet that wants to make things real. And so the new beginning, or the new moon, <laughs> is where we see the new beginning each month. Um, it sort of marks the flavor of the following month, which is the uh, following lunar cycle that the new moon begins. And so this is a very earthy and practical logical, analytical, mental, perhaps as well, uh, new beginning. And one that perhaps is involving uh, seeking the approval of authority figures or taking on new responsibilities or things of this nature with a trine to Saturn. Now, for you specifically, Gemini, this new moon is in your fourth house of home and family. So you can expect new beginnings in the area of your home and family or just for our uh your home and family to be emphasized in some way in the weeks to come throughout the next month, basically following this new moon. So that is what we have there. The final event we will be going over in this video this month is on September 24th at 6.47 a.m. Eastern Time, we have Mercury opposite Mars. Now I can tell you from... Indeed, my experience seeing uh, an aspect like this and other aspects like this, that this is highly indicative of arguments, of people fighting, of uh, angry words being exchanged, things of this nature. So I would say on one level, just beware of that to begin with. But more specifically, for you in particular, Gemini, it is occurring in your fifth house of creative self-expression, as well as your 11th house of your friends or social group. So someone or something is challenging you in one or both of those areas, and it's involving what you communicate, what you write, study, think, or talk about. It's also involving focused action, motivation, desire, and it may force you to make a choice and 
it will most likely end up affecting you personally, your home and family life, your friends or social group, and or your work health schedule or day-to-day activities. So yet again, uh, numerous areas may be affected by this uh, powerful Mercury-Mars opposition. However, that's still not the end of it, because as you may have noticed, it is square to Saturn. Both Mercury and Mars here are square to Saturn, or what's really been happening is Mars has, of course, been stuck in that square with Saturn, as we've already been over in this video, and Mercury comes in and activates it, it triggers it, and so we may see a significant manifestation of the Mars-Saturn square on or around this very day, September 24th, as Mercury um, makes these aspects. It makes an opposition to Mars and a square to Saturn, and, and thus this is what we have. Now, if my knowledge of medieval astrology serves me correctly, and I believe that it does, Saturn here would be considered to be accepting the management of Mercury and Mars, and that is where the heavier planet, meaning the slowest moving planet, uh, sort of takes responsibility for the other planets involved in a particular configuration. And what we so often see the situation of accepting the management manifest as is some kind of authority figure or at least some kind of third party who acts as a judge or a mediator or something of that nature between two opposing parties. And I think that's what Saturn is going to manifest here as for many people, uh, everyone of, of all signs. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if this manifests as a uh, court or legal case for many people. Even more so because Saturn is already a planet representing authority figures to begin with. And so that just makes it even more probable that that is what we are seeing here. Now for you specifically, Gemini, Saturn again is in your eighth house of business, your partner's money, or issues of life and death. And so someone in that area of your life may act as a sort of arbiter or judge or um, intermediary between yourself and someone or even something else that uh, is challenging you or, or you are in conflict with in some way. So uh, be cognizant of that, I would say. Other than that, Gemini, that is about it. So to try to sum this up, the month of September is definitely not easy. It is very challenging. I'm not going to sugarcoat shit for you. That's not what I do. I tell it like it is because I believe it is much better to be aware of what is actually happening than to uh, try to live in a fantasy world because if you live in a fantasy world, it's just going to get you hurt in the end. Uh, that is my very firm position. So yeah, know that know that these challenges are coming. Know that it is best to work with the energy as best as you can, especially that Mars-Saturn square. It, it all comes back to that, honestly, because um, that is just such a, uh, for me as an astrologer, that sticks out like a sore thumb this month, as they say. It sticks out like a sore thumb. That is quite the energy of frustration, but it's also a situation where and I alluded to this in my forecast last month, where each and every one of us is experiencing a sort of extended review of that particular area of our lives and a transformation of that area of our lives with uh, whatever house for each sign that Mars is in. And again, for you, Gemini, that is your 11th house of your friends or any social group to which you belong. And so that area of your life is experiencing this this sort of ongoing transformation right now that may be very frustrating, yes, but it is necessary. It's necessary to take more time, more patience, more presence with this particular area of your life right now. Um, so again, my job as an astrologer is to uh, 
predict events and and it is not to really try to assign any particular meaning to them or at least that's how i see my role as an astrologer however uh separate from that i have the philosophy that every single aspect or anything else that can be tracked through astrology that we go through we go through for a reason and it's meant to uh, help facilitate our own growth and development or at least something akin to that and so uh viewed through that lens and i think it's a very accurate one um even the most difficult or challenging of aspects and situations don't seem quite as bad. And I think that's because it's a much more objective perspective, if I'm really being honest. Uh, so anyway, yes, that is that is my advice, dear Gemini. Do your best to work with the energy. Um, don't push forward into the new right now if you can help it. Don't try to like argue with anyone right now if you can help it. Um, instead, try to stay disciplined, stay patient and stay focused on the bigger picture here because that will make things much easier for you in the end rather than if you uh, just try to uh, push forward now and when the energy is just not good for that at all so that is your september forecast gemini i hope you enjoyed if you did feel free to like and subscribe if you're not already as i'm always creating more content like this so I want to wish you a magnificent month of September indeed, despite the wretched astrological energy that we have here. <laughs> hope it's a hope it's a great month regardless. And thanks again, and I'll see you next time.